We are back on Inside Politics, focusing today on the August primary coming up in the state Senate District Number 21. That's the seat of the longtime state senator Doug Henry, who's retiring. Our guest now is Democratic activist Mary Mancini. Mary, thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me. Now you've spent several years in politics. You've worked a lot of issues and bills on the Hill. Mm -hmm. Why did you decide to become a candidate? Well, when I was uh, an advocate on behalf of working people at the state, um, I realized that the conversations that were coming out of Capitol Hill, the state legislature, the state house, and the state senate were not really where they needed to be. Uh, the, the way I like to explain it is um, whenever a, a bill is introduced up there, uh, the first question that's always asked is, is this good for big business or is this good for special interests? And I'm running because I think that there's a different conversation that needs to be had on the Senate floor and it has to be about what's good for working people. But you're going to be up there, and one thing that's changed over the last several years, and you've seen it, is the rise of the Republican supermajority. Mm -hmm. So the Democrats are probably going to lose even two more seats in the Senate this time. Uh, so you, the Democrats don't even have to show up for the Senate to be able, or the House to be able to do business. So what function do the Democrats have on the Hill? Because they're not likely in their own numbers to be able to pass or stop legislation. Well, I think it's incredibly important that, that we do show up and that we have these really tough conversations that aren't being had. That's the start of reprioritizing what's happening at the state legislature, is having those conversations. And I'm not running necessarily just to be a state senator and having conversations within the, the confines of the state legislature. I'm running because I think it's important to get people involved and to let people know what's going on up there and to have the conversations with voters and uh, other people on the ground and working families and let them know that their interests are not being looked out for. We see, for instance, uh, teachers are mobilizing right now because they are being demonized and they're under attack. And when teachers are getting involved, things are happening at the state legislature that you wouldn't normally think would be happening under a Republican super, super majority. So my goal is to get more people involved like that. And again, have those difficult conversations that aren't being had. It's important. I just sent out an email newsletter about how words matter and hard conversations uh, need to happen. Um, and so, you know, we have to start somewhere and we have to start now in changing what the priorities are. Senator Henry is the longest serving lawmaker in Tennessee history. He's mm -hmm. beloved not only in his district, but across the state. What's been your relationship with him and are you seeking to have his endorsement? Does he plan to make an endorsement in this race? Um, I respect Senator Henry immensely. I think that his shoes in the state senate are going to be very difficult ones to fill because he is such a state statesman and he did command such respect uh, from from the from his colleagues uh, i have a cordial relationship with him i don't really know him very well um, i do know that i did you know, seek his counsel, uh, talk to him when I was thinking about running. Um, from what I understand, it, he's, st he's not going to endorse in this race. Uh, one of the last bills he voted against in the legislature was the one to bring back the electric chair as a part of the death penalty in Tennessee. I assume that you are opposed to the death penalty. Oh, absolutely. Not, and it's not just me. I'm having conversations on the ground when I'm talking to voters. And this has been forefront in their mind uh, because they feel as if, and I feel as well, that we're going backwards in the state and not forwards. When you, when you look at what's happening around the country, when you look at what's happening with things like the Innocence Project, and you see that uh, there are innocent people that are being set free so often they've been on death row for decades and they're being set free because of new evidence or because of evidence being examined re-examined or dna evidence let's you know let's instead of saying let's use another means because we can't get the drugs to kill them uh, with lethal injections let's use another means to do that we need to go in the opposite direction and say what's wrong with the process that we have now let's fix the process that we so have now so if you're going to be a state senator what would you do repeal the bill that brings back the the, uh, the electric chair or go even further and decide we don't want to have the death penalty at all that kind of legislation. Absolutely. Uh, so you also are talking about what is your top priority if you become a state senator? What's the first bill you're likely to introduce? Well, your website seems to think it's repealing the, the voter ID law. Oh, even, is that what <laughs> even, even though that's already been upheld to some degree in the court. Yeah, yeah. That's not my, that, well, that is one of my priorities. I have several priorities. I think uh, one is to uh, make public education as strong as possible. And let's go ahead and look at 
what our funding mechanism is at the state level for schools, uh, reevaluate that, and see if we can bring it in line with what other states who are having success in their public education um, uh, bring it in line with what they're doing. So that's number one. The, the other thing is taking care of teachers. Uh, again, I think teachers are being demonized. They're being attacked. They're being devalued. Their work is being devalued. They, they are being held to these standards uh, that are s almost impossible to maintain. So let's talk, let's look at, you know, uh, uh, unt untethering teacher evaluations with any testing. Well, let's talk a little bit about the testing. The TCAP scores were not done in time. They're not part of the uh, right. report cards that went out. Do you think, and the governor says, well, we needed to make sure the scores were right rather than necessarily get them out on time. Is the governor, is the education secretary, his department acting responsibly in this area? I think we're asking the wrong question there. I, I think actually the question should be, what's the process that's making these test scores late? What happened? Let's look at when we've, for years we've been able to get these test scores in on time, what suddenly was the breakdown? And is our Department of Education working in the smartest way that it possibly can, or is it too mired in politics? So, you know, I think we're, again, we're asking the wrong question about that. It's not about when, it's about why. The Department of Education has also told schools if they want to, they can waive putting these test scores into the final report cards, and this is somewhere between 15 to 25 percent of the grade. Uh, is that a responsible thing to do? Metro is not going to count them in. Should Metro go back and go ahead and recount them now that the scores are available? You know, that's a decision, again, it's a decision that, here, here's what I think. The state has a, uh, a propensity to stick their nose in where it doesn't belong, right? So, for instance, there was the charter school authorizer that was passed that says that the state could go in and say to local school boards, this is what you should do in terms of bringing in a charter school. Um, I think that in this instance, it, if it's totally up to uh, Metro, to decide what they want to do, whether they want to put them in or not put them in. Again, I think we're looking at, we're asking the wrong question. The question we need to, need to ask is, how did we get to this point where what's 15 to 20 percent of a grade was not available when it should have been? Something is not working. And as a state senator, I want, would want to get to the bottom of why this didn't work. Let me ask you a question about your opponent, Jeff Yarborough. I, I think you're both considered to sort of be on the progressive side of politics. Can you name an issue where you and Jeff have a disagreement, where you have a different policy outlook? Yeah, I think charter schools is a, is a big issue. Um, so when I look at what the charter schools are doing, especially the, uh, what a charter school authorizer would do uh, in the case of um, of in Davidson County and, and what it would do, do to uh, public schools, I think that what the Davidson County School Board about putting a halt on charter schools at this point to sort of reevaluate was absolutely the right thing. We need and to you say Mr. Yarborough is opposed to that? He, he wants the school board to continue to create charters and if the state says create them, they have to follow well, that? I think you're going to have to ask Jeff the specifics of what his position are, but I could tell you that what, what I think differs. But you said it was an area that you had a policy disagreement with. Sure, on. exactly. And, and what is that disagreement? I think that he actually, I mean, he sits on the board of a, a charter school, so I think what we're looking at, at, he's not on the board of a charter school, but on the mayor's uh, commission that looked at all charter schools, about bringing charter schools in. So, you know, I'm looking at what public, how important public education is, how we could keep as much of the focus on building strong neighborhood and public schools, and I think we do differ on that. If you're a state senator, you'll be one of those who'll have to decide whether Nashville's AMP program goes forward. The state legislature decided to get involved in that issue. Are mm -hmm. you an AMP supporter, or do you have questions about the program? I have questions about the program. I, and again, I'm going to tell a story because I think this illustrates why uh, in, in the best possible way. So um, before I became a candidate, I was the executive director at Tennessee Citizen Action, and my office was literally a 10-minute drive from my house to my office in Metro Center. I decided, you know, one day, well, I, I want to ride the bus. And I put in both addresses, and during rush hour, it would have taken me an hour and a half to get from my house to Metro Center on a city bus. That is a fundamental flaw in the way our current system is run right now. So why don't we t take a look at what that system is? How can we 
basically we're putting the cart before the horse, right? How can we actually fix and make better the system that we have now, number one, and then number two, how do we market that so that better and more improved system attracts more people more ridership. Then we can look at things like the AMP and you know other uh, uh, advancements. Mary Mancini, candidate for the 21st District State Senate. Congre con thanks for coming on the show. Thank and good you. Luck thank you so much. I appreciate it. And thank you for joining us on Inside Politics this week. Hope you can be back here again for a future show. If you can't get enough politics in the meantime, go to the News Channel 5 website. You'll find my Capital View commentary there. There's a new commentary posted every Friday afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you back here next time. Goodbye.